Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Seymour EA9 HMI series panel web server and remote access. Now we're going to look at uh, their previous program that we came up with uh, on our Seymour software and detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be also links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen here, we have our Seymour um, programming software. And if we go into our navigation screen, under the function, you will see panel network. And underneath there, you will actually see a web server right there. Now, there's one way of getting to it. We can double click on that. Or we can go to our setup and go to panel network and that will call up our same thing and we have the same um, options along the bottom here so we'll go to our web server and under our web server we enable our web server function to happen which is right here we click that on and we put that as port number 80 which is the default port for our web server then we have our password option our account will be ACC automation and our password, we're going to put ACCA, um, all, small, all small case. So then you also see that at the same time, what we'll do is we'll look at our remote access as well. Now, um, one difference is the web server itself is going to give us static information and we can actually create a website that our operators will go to or uh, management will go to and find information or download files, etc. So the remote access, that will allow us to actually um, access the information on the HMI that we've programmed already and control it remotely. So here we're going to have, we're going to enable also the remote access feature of the function. The port number is going to be 11102. We're going to leave that as the default. And here is our same um, Ethernet port as our built-in Ethernet that we have already. So we're going to leave all that as the same. If we have firewalls, then we'll have to put the firewall information in. Then we have three accounts that we can set up. And we're going to set up the one account. And you can see here with permissions. We're going to we either have full control, view only, or view and, and change, uh, view and change, or screen changes only. So it defaults as you see to view only. But we're going to do full control so anything that we do remotely here the operator can do at the screen or vice versa then we have our account name we're going to call this acc and a password we're going to keep that the same just for simplicity sake it's going to be a c c a and the user restriction what this means is that we can have up to five users at this using this account at one time so you see, since we have three accounts, that means we can have 15 people at the same time operating or viewing this information. So we'll turn that back down to one, so we'll only add one. And if there's one person that's operating it and another joins, it'll just give an error message to notify, hey, there's someone else using this. Then we have a disable uh, tag. And what that disable tag will do is allow the PLC program to disable any remote users at any time. So we can have control of when that remote is going to be active and not active. Then we have a notification tag. So a notification tag will also indicate through the um, tag that there's someone connected remotely to the HMI. So we're going to leave those two blank. We're going to use the user restriction number one and everything else looks good. So we'll just hit OK. And that is our actual program. So what we're going to do now is we will take a look at the hardware. And our hardware, as always, we have our T10CL. And here's our existing screen that we've had pre previously programmed. And what we'll do is we're just going to send this information down. And we will go through our Ethernet port. And notice the, the um, IP address of our Ethernet port, which is 192.168.118. That is the same port that we set up previously in previous videos. So let's transfer that down. 
and we'll say yes. So the web server uh, is actually a hardware and software that responds to world world or worldwide web client requests. And the communication between the client and server actually is Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. And usually the information takes the form of pages that may include uh, your uh, scripts, um, it can include uh, visual pictures, etc. And then our remote access it allows for viewing and controlling of our EA9 HMI. And we use, we'll use a Windows based um, application, but you also can get Seymour remote HMI apps from I, Apple iTunes stores, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And that's for your mobile devices to actually do this as well. So our transfer is complete. We'll hit OK. And we'll close that for now. So now our program is in our Seymour. So the first thing we'll do is actually let's um, we're actually communicating to our device using our do more designer software and this is the program that we've been developing throughout the series and we have our simulator and our simulator is currently running and you can see here that we can actually um, start we can we can do stop etc for our uh, application so that's already running so let's uh, let's now uh, call up our um, we'll just close that down we'll call up our web browser right here and we will locate our web server which again which is our at our at our IP address 192 0.168.1.18 we'll enter and it will ask for our sign in value and our username was ACC automation and our password was ACCA we'll sign in and this is our default website now that we are reading from our HMI and we have a few different options here. We have a file list. So in our file list, this would list all the files that we can then download, such as our logging files that we'll do later on in this series. We can hit the home button. Then we have a screen list. And on the screen list, we can see that we can call up different pages. Uh, it shows 10 pages that we have here, just as an example. And we'll do a fancy screen one and that's what our screen one page looks like and you see here we have some navigations to go next page or we go previous page we go back to our screen list and then we go home so that's a quick rundown of our website it also gives our our instructions for creating our own website right here and that uses ftp which we'll we'll, we'll do at a later time so that's a quick uh, update of our web server. And then we have our remote access. Hitting remote access will tell us that um, uh, we have two different options. One is internally or one through a firewall. What we're going to do is do it internally. Um, no firewall. We just have a router connection, which is exactly what our setup is here. And you'll see that we have a note below that says in order to, to enable the remote access in the panel the remote server function of the touch screen panel in the project needs to be turned on this is exactly what we did prior so if we hit the um, no firewall what it will do is it will actually download a program for us and that program is what we require to um, actually do the remote communication so that is our program and it is a Windows based program so again if you have a handheld device that you want on it then you must use one of the download that software from one of the app stores so let's um, let's turn this off now let's turn um, let's, let's close that down and we'll close this one down 
and what you'll see is we have what we've done is put a shortcut on our depths desktop so the download file what we've done is right clicked on it said create a shortcut and we place it on our desktop if we double click on that unit now it comes up and asks for our username and password we will now put in our username AC and this was for remote access that we put and our password ACCA we'll hit OK and now what you'll see is that we are actually looking at the same screen as what we we show at our physical hardware located right here and you'll see that all the functions are now there we can hit the jog if we want and it will turn on and you'll see it turns on on our screen as well so the stop function all these now are available to us so if we hit select screen you'll see that we do have a slight delay but you'll see that screen actually does pop up and we can actually hit the um, we'll hit graph so let's go back to screen again we'll hit the meter graph and there we see our meter graph and if we want to see if that's really working let's just call up our um, simulator and let's just uh, give it a little bit of values here and we should be able to see those right on the screen just as we do now turn that off so you can see that's actually working now and we're getting our information in and we're actually controlling this so you see it both on our screen here and through our web browser or through our software package that we have on Windows as well as through our screen so all the information that we've programmed before is available to us either locally or remotely so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button below if you have any questions about the videos please please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it if you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging please click on the link in the description below to get it a new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.